the State Department has issued its own interim final rule on public charge. It's technically effective, but not yet being used, and we'll explain in just a moment. But this happened while all eyes were on the Department of Homeland Security's public charge rule, which was implemented. It was set to be effective October 15th, and then it was blocked by a federal judge. We're now at the point where uh, federal district judges in five separate states have blocked the Department of Homeland Security's public charge rule. But while that was going on, the State Department was working on its own version. Like we said, it was issued on October 11th. The final rule from the State Department was to change how visa eligibility was determined for those likely to become a public charge. And that language looks very similar to the language coming out of Homeland Security. It does impact people at a different state of their process. If you're going through Homeland Security, you're already in the United States petitioning for more permanent status. If you're subject to the State Department's rule, you're someone who is abroad petitioning for a visa to come to the United States. So it's impacting two different groups of people, but the language is largely the same. Now, the State Department's rule was scheduled to be effective October 15th as well, the same effective date as Homeland Security. But while it was published in the Federal Register, it wasn't immediately enforced. And the explanation comes on the State Department's website saying, we don't really have the paperwork in place to enforce this new public charge rule. So as of right now, it is effectively postponed. Now, the paperwork they're talking about are some new forms to collect information that needs sign off by the Office of Management and Budget, and they don't have that yet. So one of the tips is to stay tuned to that State Department website, and we link to that in the description below. As soon as you hit that website, you get a big yellow box that tells you the status of their public charge rule. That's where any updates would be posted. So the other thing to keep clear is these are two very separate agencies, Homeland Security and State Department, that have their own rules, and they are not impacting each other's rules. So even though there's an injunction on the Homeland Security rule, blocking it from implementation, that does not impact the State Department's rule. So in theory, if the State Department gets their forms approved by the Office of Management and Budget like they think they will, they could then go ahead and implement their new rule at any time. So that's something we will keep watch on and keep you posted here on this channel. Now, speaking of forms, as if this isn't confusing enough, Homeland Security wanted to create some new forms too. That has been blocked by a separate judge. Homeland Security wanted forms that would collect a lot more data on individuals like credit score, evidence of health insurance, school transcripts. Right now, that is also blocked. So try to keep your department straight and your forms straight. Let's give a real quick rundown of where things stand. And let's start with Homeland Security and let's finish with State Department. Department of Homeland Security, where things stand right now. Right now, no change to the current definition of public charge. The whole point of the new public charge rule was to create a broader definition of what constitutes a public charge. Since that has been blocked, we're using the old definition, which just is more generally cash benefits. If you use cash benefits, you're more likely to be deemed a public charge than not. Continue to use the existing forms without extra documentation. Expect that litigation will continue, and the Trump administration is signaling it that they would likely appeal those injunctions. Where do things stand right now in the State Department? Well, let's look at what's going on there. This is where it's a lot less clear. This is why we're staying tuned to their website to determine if visa applicants need to take any additional steps. And right now, the instruction on the website says, no, you don't need to take any additional steps. Attend your visa interviews as scheduled. So like we said, we are linking to a number of sources in the description below, including that State Department final rule as published in the Federal Register, the State Department's website, where you can stay tuned for breaking news and announcements, and the State Department's request for form approval that's going through that Office of Management and Budget. And that's where you can get a little bit more information of what they're looking for. Of course, we will keep you posted on this channel, so make sure you subscribe so as we learn more, you can learn more as well.